what is the cost of IV vitamin C? I think we could better ask that question, what is the cost of not incorporating IV vitamin C into your cancer care? See, when we look at IV vitamin C, it's really the flagship of integrative medicine and the flagship of integrative oncology. I've been doing IV therapies and in the integrative medical movement going back to 2005, 2006, and been employing high dose IV vitamin C for a wide spectrum of disease states, wellness, health, and prevention. Now, when I mention that IV vitamin C is a flagship, what I mean there is it is the emblem of integrative medicine. When everybody looks to integrative medicine, there are a few therapies that people think of, and IV vitamin C is one of those. Of course, vitamin C as an IV therapeutic in cancer, it, it predates Linus Pauling, but that's, that's really where things um, came mainstream. Uh, Linus Pauling published a couple studies, 1976, 1978, where he was actually looking at IV vitamin C, only 10 grams, so not really that high dose, and was using it in terminal cancer patients. Actually found extension in the survival of these terminal cancer patients. So uh, very exciting. But here we are now in 2024, and there's still a debate about IV vitamin C. So it's that flagship. It's the point of contention between those that support integrative medicine, integrative cancer care, and those that are opposed to it. But what, what I've noticed, and you've probably noticed this too, is that to a degree on both sides of the debate, there's a lack of knowledge. Now, that's not just unique to IV vitamin C because there's a lot of debates in the arena of ideas, political or non, that both sides maybe lack some degree of education on it. Now, I would definitely say on the integrative medical side, side there is more knowledge, but I would say there's a lot of uh, a lacking there too. But definitely on the conventional side, my experience has been they don't even look into it. And so because it's labeled a alternative, because it's, it is that flagship of integrative medicine, so it's labeled alternative, by labeling it alternative, it, it, its research, its investigation is simply not warranted. That's the way they approach it. Now, I would tell you there's a study that was just published this month, November 2024, that you have to check out the podcast at prescribed by Dr. Nathan Goodyear. You find it on Podbeam. You'll find it on the pre scribecom website. And we're going to be recording that here in the next day or two. And I'm going to go through that study because I believe it's the door was already cracked, but it's blowing. It's going to blow through the door as it relates to IV vitamin C with chemotherapy in pancreatic cancer. And I think that's going to really get us on into the other area. But even on the integrative side, the natural holistic side, there's a lot of people using vitamin C and they're just not using it correctly. So for example, if every patient in your clinic, five foot two, 120 pounds, you know, six foot two, 360 pounds, if they're both getting 50 grams IV vitamin C, you know, that should beg the question, is this actually therapeutic there? So what's high dose IV vitamin C? Because most cases, 50 grams IV vitamin C would be considered high dose. Well, when we look at the oral vitamin C dosing, we know that that is never going to achieve a high dose plasma level that can be directly cytotoxic toxic cancer cells. It's because of what's called two-phase two, two compartment pharmacokinetics of the gastrointestinal absorption of vitamin C. Uh, big words, you can see I stumbled on it, but um, it's a, pharmaco a pharmacodynamic perspective where when you're taking vitamin C, when the plasma level is below 100 uh, milli uh, micromolars, then what happens is the gut upregulates its absorption and it blocks the, the kidney excretion. But yet, 
when it's above that level in the blood, then the gastrointestinal system continues to absorb it, but the kidneys block its excre- it's going to be excreted out. So you basically reach a plateau of what you're going to see in the, the blood from the oral route. That's why you'll never achieve the bare minimum of one millimolar, which is considered the very, very basement level of having direct cytotoxic effect. And in fact, when you look at the actual um, the uh, peak of the direct cytotoxic effect of vitamin C in the plasma against cancer, it's about 20 to 40 millimolar, which is about 350 to 450 milligrams per deciliter. But a high dose by the literature, it's, there's not a, a clear designation, but, but loosely, it's about 1.5 grams per kilogram. So you calculate that out, take your weight, divide it by 2.2, that converts pounds to kilograms, and then multiply that by 1.5. That is where high-dose IV vitamin C starts when you're looking at the treatment of cancer in a directly cytotoxic effect. Oh, sure. Vitamin C has many non direct cytotoxic effects as it relates to cancer. It's an immunomodulator, it's epigenetic modifier. Okay, so many, many things. But the three mechanisms by which it's inducing a direct cytotoxic effect there is one, it's inducing an energy crisis, uh, disrupting ATP production, disrupting the pentose phosphate pathway, uh, leading to a drop in ATP. And in, in this, in this, uh, process of the high metabolic rate in cancer that is going to basically create a massive crisis, oxidative stress, and the cancer cell just can't handle that. And number two is a a redox crisis. And so the vitamin C through its uh, electron donation, you're going to shift the redox balance and that will in turn also lead to a triggering of program cell death. And third, we have a detoxification crisis. It actually um, it reduces the reduced form of glutathione, thus limiting the cancer cell's ability to actually detox, if you will, um, the oxidative stress within the cell. So these are the three primary mechanisms by which high-dose IV vitamin C, when it's, a, it's, when it's given high-dose and IV at a 1.5 gram per kilogram, in the plasma, reaching the extracellular space and then actually achieving uh, tumor saturation. But the cost here is if you don't, if you don't get it, because vitamin C improves the quality of life. IV vitamin C reduces the side effects of radiation. It reduces the side effects of chemotherapy. It augments immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy. And there's this new study I just mentioned, November 2024, where it's augmenting chemotherapy, augmenting chemotherapy in pancreatic cancer. Human phase two clinical trial. So again, check out that podcast coming. But it augments radiation. When you think about it, it makes sense. Radiation and chemotherapy are pro-oxidative. High dose IV vitamin C is pro-oxidative as well. Now, beyond just the dose, because everybody focuses on dose, there's also duration and there's also frequency. And we have to understand that when we talk about the cost as a monetary perspective, right? Um, most people, when they go to vitamin C clinics, what you're seeing is where they're rapidly turning over the chair. So they're more what we would call drip clinics. But if you're using IV vitamin C as it relates to a cancer treatment, that high dosing, it's not just dose, it's also bringing in duration and frequency. So the duration here, you're looking at typically I dose at 12.5 to 25 grams per hour. So if you think about that, if you're dosing 100 grams, you're doing 25 grams an hour, four hours. It's four hours. And so it's a, it's a, it's a steady, ongoing administration and delivery of the vitamin C into the blood to really achieve that therapeutic, therapeutic effect. So dose, duration, and frequency. When you look at Linus Pauling's da- data, he was actually doing two times a week. And Reardon actually showed that when you drop below two times a week, the, the anti-cancer effects of vitamin C really was lost. But in actuality, when you look at the uh, cancer cells and how they hold on to vitamin C longer, about 48 hours, the actual frequency of dosing should be about you know, every other day. So every 48 hours, so three times a week. So when we look at the cost from a financial perspective, we have to consider 
are you at a clinic where they're dosing it to achieve that dose and duration and frequency as it relates to cancer? Or are you just in a clinic that is there to turn that chair over and then rush a vitamin C in there, not provide a therapeutic value in dose and duration or frequency? And so there, is it worth your your time? Is it worth your money there? But if you're using IV vitamin C for dose, duration, and frequency, using it properly, following plasma ascorbic acid levels, the value of IV vitamin C is going to be overwhelming. Not just quality of life, but augmented augmentation of conventional therapy, but direct cytotoxic effects alone. We know that with CRAS and BRAS, CRAS and BRAF mutations, for example, in colorectal cancer, vitamin C in part is having an anti-cancer effect that way as well. So it's targeting genomically. But I would say beyond the monetary means, which obviously all of us have to be concerned about that, the greater cost is if you have cancer that you don't include high-dose IV vitamin C in your cancer care. So if you want to learn more about IV vitamin C, high-dose IV vitamin C, or all things vitamin C.